When you joined the White House, you, you wrote quite extensively about the deficit and concerns about the fiscal trajectory of the country that goes back decades. Do you feel like, do you worry that a legacy of this tax law could be its impact on the deficit? Or no, I think the deficit is skyrocketing, but it's not a legacy of the tax law. It's a legacy of the spending deal that just happened that you know, spent you know, a lot more than the president wanted. Uh, and, and the way to think about the tax deal, by the way, uh, is that the, the static score was about $1.4 trillion over 10 years. The, the corporate side was that it would cost about $400 billion, and the individual side, it was about a trillion. On the corporate side, the $400 billion that it would cost as a static score, you know, clearly, dynamically, we're getting more revenue than that back. Uh, in fact, if you look at the CBO's current estimate for corporate tax revenue over the next 10 years, that it's above what their estimate was a year ago before the tax bill already. Uh, and so that the cost of the tax bill, the, the loss of taxes, is on the individual side. That includes pass-throughs, right? Right, but $700 billion of the trillion, um, now granted there's pluses and minuses and so you could pick, but $700 of the, billion, of the trillion, $700 billion of it was a refundable child credit which can only have a positive dynamic effect on the economy, really, if you think it's going to affect fertility, which you know, will take at least nine months, I guess, to discover that. Uh, uh, but, but yeah, so, so, so I think that when you're, if you're looking at the tax bill and saying, geez, it blew a hole in the deficit, then you really need to be upset about the expansion of the child credit. And I think that there are a lot of social justice arguments uh, for why, if we're going to target tax relief, we should do it on families with children, because the, you know, that equalizes opportunity. And while we might disagree about you know, the ex post income distribution, I think we all agree that we should try to equalize opportunity. So do you feel comfortable that the tax law will ultimately end up paying for itself or, or adding revenue to the federal balance sheet? Yeah. You know, you know again, I, I think that, that if we grow an extra percent a year. Remember when we uh, took office, uh, the, you know, the president promised 3% growth. I think we're almost certainly, I think right now, uh, our internal models say it's about 80% that we'll have 3%, a full year of 3% once we get second quarter GDP in. That if you grow 3% instead of, say, the 2% that we inherited for uh, 10 years, that's an extra percent a year. Uh, that That's not just taxes, it's you know, deregulation and whatever else we do. But a percent a year, that gets 10% higher GDP uh, in the 10th year. And I guess GDP in the 10th year right now is uh, estimated to be about $28 trillion. So, so you get $2.8 trillion more GDP. Uh, and, and, or, or let me put it this way. The, the, so right now, the deficit over 10 is about a trillion dollars higher uh, because of the big expansion of spending and because of the CBO's you know, unwillingness to have much growth effect from the, from the tax bill. Uh, but GDP over the next 10 years is like, what, more than four times right. uh, higher than that. It's about six times higher than that. And so, so would you trade a trillion dollar uh, increase in the deficit for six trillion more GDP? Uh, if you have a model that says you shouldn't do that, then you probably should check your model. But are you, you're kind of assuming that there won't be a recession, that we'll go 10 years with no economic setback, external shock or anything. And, it, and in, I think in American history, we've never gone through a period of this long without any kind of recession or something like that. So mm -hmm. couldn't it be exacerbated? Right. You're right that a recession would change the trajectory. And, and if you go back and look, uh, I haven't checked every uh, CEA forecast forever. It, it, you know, it really is, as you know, the main job of the CEA is to do the forecast for the government of what uh, GDP growth will be. I don't think a, a recession has ever been forecasted by the CEA. And the reason is that economists generally aren't very good at saying when the recession is going to happen. But I would say that over a 10-year period, the odds of there being a recession, you know, unconditionally are probably like north of 50-50 mm -hmm. for sure. A and, uh, you know, that's something one needs to factor in. But the, the forecasts that we do, you know, are, are based on sort of the average of upside and downside scenarios. And that's the way all CEA chairs have done it. The, the typical CEA forecast over time is a little bit higher over 10 uh, than the forecast that we have. Uh, and which is for an average of about 3% growth over 10 years. The average for CEA chairman in the past has been maybe about a quarter percent above that. Uh, our forecast was controversial when we came in because the previous administration had said that we're stuck in this new normal with growth. Remember, they had 1.5% growth as right. we were taking office that with, with growth that was low because there was this exogenous force that was driving growth low. Uh, and that we're stuck at one and a half forever, and that anybody who says anything differently is a is stupid, a liar, or both. Uh, well, well, our view was that we could change policies and return us to the normal normal, not the new normal, of three percent growth. And so far, that bet is looking pretty good. So you.